We thought when we painted a mural on this huge rec center in Elko, Nevada, that we'd never paint something that big ever again. Turns out, we were wrong. While our mural in Elko takes the cake for the biggest building, this one holds the trophy for the largest surface area to cover. We're painting both sides of this beast, and there's no time to lose. Okay, so we're in Marathon, Ontario, a small town nestled along Lake Superior's North Shore. We're here to paint a massive mural at the Marathon Arena and Rec Center. This mural is a gift to the community from Barrett Gold, who is supporting this huge community project. First up, the design. So we are off this morning to go get a drone shot of the, uh, the landscape around this area because Mr. Jose Luis, the grand artist, is going to use that as part of the design. So he wants to get a photo that he knows will wrap all the way around the building. So off we go to put the drone up in the air and get that shot. Now it's back to the bus to get cracking on the rest of the design. The city of Marathon is allowing us to stay here at beautiful Penn Lake Campground. If you visit Marathon, wait, what am I saying? Not if, when you visit Marathon, you have gotta stay here. It's beautiful. What better place to be as an artist tasked with designing a mural? I really don't envy this part of Jose's job. Designing a mural is the hardest step. It takes a lot of creative energy, a lot of back and forth, trying this and that. You'll actually see the design change quite a lot over this whole design process. Whoa, look at you. The design is a celebration of the cultural and natural landscapes of the region. So it combines the landscape surrounding the town of Marathon, from that drone shot he got earlier, with the seven grandfather teachings of the Anishinaabe, the indigenous First Nation peoples of this region. The seven grandfather teachings are principles of character to live by. The turtle represents truth. The bear represents courage. The eagle represents love. The wolf represents humility. The beaver represents wisdom. The buffalo and the sabe, or sasquatch, represent respect and honesty. While those two were originally put in the design, it was decided to instead place a moose and a fish to more closely align with the region's fauna. Phew! So design is done. Now it's time to prep that wall. First things first, when painting a mural, you've got to get the wall prepped correctly. And you might have noticed a very important detail. This wall is corrugated metal. Now metal is really tricky to paint and you've got to do it right or the mural and all your hard work is just going to peel right off. The first thing you've got to do with metal is get it super clean. Lucky for us, the community of Marathon is awesome. So awesome in fact that the fire department is coming to do us a solid in pressure washing the wall for us. How awesome is that? Now don't get me wrong, I love big cities as well. One of my favorite places on the planet is New York City. But there is also a very, very, very special thing about small towns, and this is one of them. I mean, where else do you just call up the fire chief and say, hey, can you come and hose down the, the wall that we're gonna do a community mural on? I mean, and then they just show up with the truck and do it. And not only that, they're focusing on the part that is an actual problem spot where the paint is peeling off a little bit and they're like going to town at it with the high pressure fire vehicles. I mean, it's just awesome. Thank you. Really cool, really awesome that they came over to hose down the wall and get us one step closer to making sure that this is 
a mural that stays for a long time for this community. Nice and clean. Even after that awesome pressure wash, there's still some more work to do, though. See this peeling paint? That's no bueno. If we leave it like that, the paint will just peel right off. So that has to be stripped off completely. Enter Jose, the pressure washer man. Again, Marathon is a really cool town with a close-knit community. The city is super supportive. They're letting us use one of the city's pressure washers and even got some extra hoses for us to use. Jose is also taking this opportunity to go at the entire wall real close with the pressure washer. This will make sure it's free of dirt and debris. All right, wall is prepped. Time to prime, right? So we thought today that we would be ready to prime the wall, but unfortunately, Mama Nature had a different plan and we cannot prime today, and I will show you why. This is the day that we're having, and you can see it's very, 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 very uh, foggy. And so the humidity today is over 90%, and the primer cannot be applied uh, with humidity over 85%. If we were to apply the primer with this type of humidity, uh, the chances are it would not stick the way that it's supposed to. And of course, if you don't have a good canvas, you can't have a good painting. So uh, if the primer is, doesn't adhere correctly, none of the mural will. So it's just too risky. We can't prime today. And we're really hoping that um, that tomorrow the humidity goes down just enough that then we'll be able to prime this thing. The fog sticks around for two days, but eventually it lifts. We head out to prime and then... So the universe is testing us on this one. The last two days, the humidity has been too high to prime. Today, the humidity is great, but there's a lot of wind. So we got to kind of wait a couple hours until the wind dies down so that we can use the spray machine because if, if we don't spray, this wall would take forever. Finally, Mama Nature is cooperating and giving us good priming conditions. So off we go. It's so awesome priming with a spray gun best investment ever. In the past, we've done it with brushes and rollers, which just isn't as efficient. You might be curious about that primer, and if you're a savvy painter, you might be saying, hey, wait a minute, they didn't scuff the metal before priming. Well, we're using Zinsser Bullseye, which is top of the line stuff, and for a good reason. It sticks to just about everything, no joke, including metal without needing to sand first. As the wall is being primed, we can feel the energy and curiosity mounting in town. Are they painting the building white? Why? Or is it going to be a mural? And if so, what's it going to be? Well, it's been a bit tough to prime this wall, but it is Saturday night and we are finishing it up. It is that time, the sometimes dreaded <laughs> projecting time. It's very late. It's uh, what time is it, love? Like... It's almost midnight. All right, let's go project this design. Let's go. See how much we can get done tonight. Wish us luck. To transfer Jose's mural designs, we always use a combination of projecting and good old math, rulers, and oftentimes a chalk line. We're seeing how far we can make it tonight. We're tired because we've been at the wall all day, but we'll see how far we get. Yep. The 
The next day, we're at it with rulers, chalk lines, and math. If this were a flat wall, we would just lay the chalk line, snap it, and we'd be done. But since this is a wall that has all this, well, we'd say texture, but you know, it's like a mountainscape. Um, it's a lot harder to get lines to flow across it. But it's not impossible. It just takes time. We are ready to start painting and Cora is going to have the honor to lay the first drop of color on this wall. <laughs> Can you tell that she's excited? The colors on this wall, I just love the, the palette for this wall. Super excited. Are you ready for the challenge of doing a straight lines on this crazy wall? It is what it is. We're so happy we got that design transferred in time because volunteers are on the way. So now we have come to the time in the mural process, which we think is the most fun when the community comes out and this mural kind of transfers hands. It's no longer ours, it is ours. So we've got some volunteers who are, sh who are showing up to help paint and make the mural theirs. And ladies and gentlemen, this is where you meet the rock star volunteer of not just this mural, but all our murals so far. Everyone meet Colette. Colette just showed up on day one. Little do we know how awesome of a person she is and how instrumental she's going to be for this entire project. We're rocking and rolling now. This is the fun part. At this stage, everything goes fast. It's the first coat and we are covering big sections of the wall. We're not worried about details yet, so color just goes up fast and it's real exciting. So it was a successful day one here at the wall with volunteers. It was amazing, so many people came out. You can see all of the color that got filled in. So we need to be ready for a whole new set of volunteers tomorrow which means we need wall for them to paint. They need a design that they can paint inside. So we've got to start transferring lines. So we've got a couple hours. We'll be able to transfer some lines over there before we just get too tired and call it a night. And then time for volunteers again tomorrow. And so begins a great grand seesaw. We paint by day with volunteers and we continue transferring the design by night. We've got a great mix of community volunteers and Barrett Gold team members all coming to pitch in. It's really starting to hit us now just how huge this mural project is. The design just keeps going and going. The wall just keeps going and going. It's really exhilarating. Painting a canvas this big is every artist's dream. It's also kind of overwhelming because it's starting to hit us that this project might take longer than we thought. And we still have that goal of reaching Alaska this summer. Are we gonna be able to make it after all? On this day, a whole crew of Barrick team members are here to knock out a huge section of wall. It's a beautiful day, lots of laughter and smiles and sunshine. It's a good day. All the amazing volunteers are rocking our world. Colette is there every day, no joke, no exaggeration, every day. 
and others cycle in and out, everyone's super excited to pick up a brush and leave their mark on the community mural. And the cycle continues. Painting by day, transferring the design by night. You might have noticed by now one of the other big challenges of this wall, besides the fact that it's just so big. If you haven't, I'll give you a second to think about it. It's this. The corrugation of the metal, combined with this, the straight lines that Jose incorporates in all his art. Not just mural, but his paintings too. Transferring and painting a straight line on a flat wall is a piece of cake. Doing it on a corrugated wall is another thing entirely. It's really tough. Yeah, this texture, right? Yeah. The corrugation is, it just turns into a whole different ball game. It's fun though, it's a good challenge. Yeah. But the result is totally awesome. The final mural is almost holographic changing as you change your perspective relative to the mural. Straight on, the lines look straight. From an angle, it looks pixelated and distorted in a really eye-pleasing way. We are transferring more of the design. It's a beautiful night, beautiful sunset. Check it out. Now during our time in Marathon, it's not all just mural, mural, mural. Folks in Marathon are super friendly, and we're making friends left and right. Like Al Cresswell, the host of the North Shore's main radio station, CFNO. There you have it, Cora Rodriguez with a song entitled Change, uh, part of Aren't We There Yet, a uh, beautiful song, got a beautiful voice. And Rick and Wendy, who became great friends and took us out blueberry picking one day. Is it ready? Mmm. Oh wow, you got so many. Nice. Delicious and nutritious tastes just like blueberry. They have also helped so much on the mural. Wendy is a professional house painter, so boy howdy has she been working wonders on that wall. And of course, lots of quality time with Colette and her husband Jacques. They are such wonderful, wonderful people. Here we are having dinner with Colette, Jacques, and our other friend Bernd. There may have been a barbecue or two. Did you give it a morning? Okay, you saw half an avocado. They might Jack and Lillian, Sonia and Sherry. It's impossible to name everyone we connected with without the video going on and on and on. But you know who you are and you know how much you mean to us. It's gonna have the winter in it, it's not because of the race. But most of the time, we're here. At the wall, just plugging away. It's just so big, it's taking a lot more time than we thought. We're also being held up quite a bit by the weather, unfortunately. Marathon is right on Lake Superior, and Lake Superior has its own weather system. Almost every night, the fog rolls in, and sometimes it sticks around all day. When that happens, we can't paint because the humidity is too high. So there are a lot of days on this video that you don't see, where we show up to the wall, the fog rolls in, and we have to head home. And there are also a lot of nights that you don't see here, where we go out to project and it starts raining. But despite all that, we're keeping our spirits high and we just keep plugging on.
Finally, it's the last night of projecting. Projecting is done. We finished it. Got home before midnight. And it feels so good. We're gonna get a good night's sleep and hit the wall again tomorrow. It's a foggy day in Marathon. We'll have a late start for painting today. Unfortunately. We're in the kind of home stretch now. The big sections of sky don't need a second coat, but everything else does. Some colors even need a third coat. And all those lines need to be cleaned up so that they really pop. So we just keep at it every day that we have good weather. Up top there are actually spots that still need the first coat, but that is all Jose's job up there on the lift. Down below, we're all busy on those second coats. In the midst of all that plugging away, we're going to take a break for a day for a really unique and special experience. We're so lucky that during our time here in the area, the annual powwow of the Big Tigong Nishinaabek is taking place. I see lots of cars. So this is the feast that everybody gets to share together. We got um pulled pork sandwich, mm. potatoes, coslo, baked beans. It's pretty good. Awesome. Elders went first, and then the dancers, and then the singers, and then visitors, and then the community. And so we're gonna enjoy some dinner. And then later on, there's going to be the grand entry, which is, uh, we can't film that, but we'll describe it for you later. In the words of the community, the Big Tigong Nishinaabek have been on this land since time immemorial. The community is a progressive First Nation with strategic visioning, growth, prosperity, and cultural traditions that strive to find balance in the modern era of the Anishinaabek while honoring the traditional values of their ancestors. It is so amazing to be here for this event. Little do we know, we'll be back in a few short weeks to do a songwriting workshop here in the community. And then back to it. It's hard to um, communicate via video and photos how big this wall really is. 
when you look at it, even even personally, when you look at it from far away, you're like, oh, that's not so big. And then you get up next to it and you're like, oh my gosh, it's a really, really big wall. So here's a little bit of perspective. I mean, you can see Jose behind me. You can see his little body there up in the lift next to the moose. So it kind of gives you a perspective of how big this wall really is. It's really big. <laughs> and you've also got to remember that this is only one of the walls. This is a two wall mural. The one around the other side is almost as long as this wall. At this point, we've been in Marathon way longer than we anticipated. It's a beautiful area and we don't regret it at all. We've made great friends and the area is just so stunning that Jose has actually been capturing tons of drone footage to create a short film to celebrate this amazing corner of the world. The only thing that makes us nervous is that the summer is slipping away and this is our last summer to make it to Alaska. What do we do if we can't make it in time? Do we wait another year and try for next summer? That would be four years in a row we've missed Alaska. Or do we just scratch Alaska from the itinerary altogether? That would be a big bummer. We can't answer any of those questions right now. We just gotta get the mural done. So we keep our heads down and just keep painting. Just keep painting. Just keep painting, painting, painting. What do we do? We paint. have a few a few shapes then you second coats and then we'll be done We got too confident. We thought maybe the rain stopped and it was good and we could keep painting and get this thing done today and then it started raining and now we're protecting this little spot we were working on. So we're gonna have to call it quits for today and we're not gonna be able to finish it today like we hoped. And then, just like that, it's a wrap. Barrett Gold throws a huge community barbecue to celebrate, and it feels like half the town shows up to give a big hip hip hooray. The arena has been transformed from a plain brown building into a vibrant mural in the heart of town, celebrating the landscape and the cultural heritage of the region. So many hands and hearts came together to bring this community project to life. 
Thank you to Barrett Gold for sponsoring this gift to the community. Thank you to all the volunteers who gave countless hours to bring the project to life. And especially, thank you to Colette. Let's all give three cheers for Colette. You blew us away with your tenacity, dedication, and continually positive and bright energy. What a light in the world. Thank you to the community for welcoming us in. What a ride it has been. And what a splash of color we all made together. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art Be There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.